Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we are going to create two very important utility classes for our Pocket Droids Go game. We're going to create the Singleton class template and our Droid Factory. Our Droid Factory, as the name suggests, is a factory for droids. It's going to populate our droids around our player wherever they show up on the map to give us something to chase, something to capture, and something to do. And if you're unfamiliar with what a singleton is, the singleton is a design pattern that basically ensures that there's never more than one instance of a class at any given time. So examples of a use case would be something like a game manager, or if you have a one-player game and want to make sure that no matter what weird circumstance is going on, You've only got one player ever. To get started, let's right click on our utilities directory and we're going to create a new C -sharp script and we're going to call it singleton and we'll double click to go into our IDE. And despite the important job that this class has, it's actually really easy to set up. So we're going to make this a public abstract class called singleton and we are actually going to assign a template type and it's going to inherit from mono behavior where key also inherits from mono behavior. And the biggest feature of the singleton class is the instance. And the instance is essentially the gateway to access this class. So it's going to be a private T or template type of instance. And then we're going to want a getter for that. But the getter is going to be a little more complicated than we are typically used to. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to get rid of start and update because we don't need that. For our getter, we're going to have two cases. We're going to have a case where it exists and a case where it does not. So we're going to say if instance equals null. So if our instance does not have anything assigned to it, then we are going to go ahead and assign that to a find object of type, and that's going to be of type T. So whatever template class we passed in. Now, if an instance already does exist, if we've already got it assigned to something, then we don't want whatever this new thing is. So we're just going to call destroy on the game object. And then we're going to tell it, don't destroy on load for the game object that we are working with. And then we just return instance. And that's it. You now have a big old design pattern implemented in your code base. How cool is that? So let's save that. And then I'm going to switch back to Unity. And in our utilities, we are going to go ahead and create another C Sharp script. And we're going to name this Droid Factory. And then we're going to come into this script. And Droid Factory is going to inherit from type singleton of Droid Factory. So now that we've done that, this is going to be the, the only Droid Factory in existence in our entire environment. And that's guaranteed. For the Droid Factory, we're not going to need to update. So let's go ahead and get rid of that, get rid of the start comment. And we're going to need a few variables for our droid factory. The first one that we're going to deal with is going to be a serialized field private game object array of type droid game object array available droids. And then the next is going to be a serialized field private player player. And I actually think I want to change this to type droid just to make sure that we are only getting droids. And then we're going to want some kind of wait time to tell us how long do we want to wait before generating droids. And that's just going to be a float. And we'll call that wait time. And we're going to set that to 180.0F to begin with. So it's going to be three minutes between each droid, which may be a little long, but we can always play with that later. And then we'll need another serialized field to say, OK, well, how many droids do we want to start with? So int of starting droids, and we're going to start with five. And again, we can adjust as necessary. And then I'll explain these in just a minute. But we're going to need a private float of min range. And I'm going to set that to 5.0 F. And then we're going to need another one just like it. Oops, there we go. And we're going to call this max range. And I'm going to set that to, let's say, let's say 50. Let's go ahead and put in some assertions into our awake function. We want to make sure that we've always got a player and a list of droids that's valid before this runs. So if we don't have that info in there, we need to know. So we want it to throw an error. And to do that, we will make an assertion. Assert dot is not null. Available droids. 
And then I will just copy and paste. And we're going to throw player in there as well to make sure that our player is not null. Now for this script to work, we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is make a way for us to instantiate a droid, put it on the map. So we're going to create a private function, private void instantiate droid. And it's not going to take any parameters. All this function is going to do is figure out what droid we want to instantiate and put it on the map somewhere. So we're going to say int index equals random.range. And we're going to say with a range of 0 to available droids.length. And since the integer version of random.range is exclusive, we're going to go on that one. In order to instantiate our droid, we're also going to need some coordinates. So I'm going to say float x equals player dot transform dot dot position dot x and then we're going to do the same thing for float z equals player dot transform dot position dot z and then y equals player dot transform dot position dot y and now we've got all the info we need to instantiate an instance of this droid so we're going to say available droids with an index of index, a new vector three with x, y, and z as the coordinates, and quaternion dot identity so that there's no rotation on it. But as it stands, there's a little bit of a problem with this function. Any ideas? The problem with this function is right now it's going to instantiate all of these droids every time directly on top of the player. And first off, that's not great from a visual standpoint. And second off, that's not really the goal of the game. The goal of the game is to walk around and find these things. If they're dropping right on top of you, then what's the point? So we're going to go ahead and create a function called private float generate range. And this function is actually going to be pretty simple. All we're going to do here is get a random number. Random num equals random dot range. And this is where we're going to use our min range and max range. And just as a reminder, the float version of random dot range is inclusive. So this max range is going to be the top number that we can use. And this is cool and all, but at this point, it's only going to give us positive values, which isn't necessarily what we want. We want them to be a little more random than that and get the effect of a real radius going on. So to do that, we're going to create a bool called is positive. And that is just going to be random dot range. Zero and 10 is less than five. So it's got approximately a 50% chance. So it's got a 50% chance of being either one. And then to utilize that, we're just going to go ahead and say return random num times and then in parentheses, we're going to use a ternary expression to get kind of a quick if else to say is positive question mark one or negative one. So if it's positive, we'll multiply by one. If it's not, then negative one. Super simple. And now we've got a way to get some randomness to the position. So we're going to say for float x up here in the instantiate droid function plus generate range. And then generate range for the Z index as well. We're not going to do it for Y because we don't want our objects way up in the sky or dropped down to the ground. Now that could be a cool feature for flying things to be in the air, but that's that's up to you. That's something you can go implement. And with that, we are almost done with this script. We've got two more steps left. First, when we first start, we want to go ahead and use this starting droids variable up here to at least put something on our map when we first begin. So let's just do a simple basic for loop and i equals zero i is less than starting droids i plus plus. And we're just going to call instantiate droid. There, simple. But right now it's just going to generate those once and be done. So we want to go ahead and add a coroutine as well. Let's add a private ie numerator. If I can spell a numerator and we're going to call it generate droid. Or generate droids rather. 
And then we're just going to say while true instantiate droid. And then we're going to yield a yield return new. Wait for seconds. And we're just going to pass in the wait time. So this function is going to allow us to have a coroutine going on to always be generating droids all over the screen. We just need to add that in our start function. So, so in start, we're just going to call start coroutine. And we're going to pass in generate droids. And that's it. We now have a droid factory. How cool is that? So let's save. So let's save that script. And then I'm going to go back to Unity. And we're just going to take our droid factory and drag it onto the main camera. And we'll click on main camera. And you'll see that the droid factory script is now active on there. For the dro available droids array, we're going to pass in two droids. And we'll grab those from the prefabs in our droid folder. So element 0 can be droid 1. Element 1 can be droid 2. And then our player is obviously going to be our player object from the world. And then we're just going to go ahead and leave the rest of those alone for now. I'm going to save. And let's see if our droid factory is working. Let's press play. And let's swivel over towards the screen. And we've got good news. We've got droids all over the place. How cool is this? And we've got six of them on the screen, which tells me the coroutine's working since our initial was five. So every three minutes right now, we should be getting a droid. And we can see one right here on the screen. So let's stop running that. And we're going to go ahead and call this video good. In this video, we've created a singleton template class that we're going to use for a couple of different types of factories and important classes. We've also created our droid factory class, which has started putting droids for us to go collect all over our map. And all of that is based on the current position of the player, which is really cool because in combination with Mapbox's SDK, that allows us to put droids anywhere on the screen in the world and have them persist in exactly the latitude and longitude they're supposed to be. And as we walk around, it'll generate droids. Say our player's walking down a street and it generates droids. They turn around and start walking back. The droids that were generated will still be there for them to capture which is super cool. Let's go ahead and just update our collab repository with added singleton and droid factory classes. Publish now. And perfect, we're up to date. Let's move on and get the rest of this game worked out. It's really exciting to see all of this starting to come to life. This is Ben with devslopes.com and we'll see you next time.